What's up, YouTube? It's Andy here with All Things Andy, and today I got a Dyson Sphere program video for you. I was on Reddit recently looking at posts about Dyson Sphere program, and there were a lot of players who were frustrated with the logistics of the game and trying to figure out what's a good way for them to run a bus, how to run something that works, uh, maybe doesn't look so terrible, but people were getting stuck in the mid game. Uh, or late phase of the early game around yellow science where things get a little more complicated and they would get frustrated, they would stop, start over, so my intention was to show people how to do this but then I thought, let's start at the beginning show you how to set up a basic base and um, get science going and in the next video I'll do logistics the way I do it um, I do like to use a bus system, so essentially I automate a couple things like belts and sorters and then uh, science and then from there I rush concrete so that I can build around the water and then once I have that then I really start doing my bus system in you know, full production and I will do another video that shows what that looks like. So let's get into it here. So I'm just starting out. It's a normal planet, normal settings. And I'm just gonna set up the basic production for mining um, and research a couple things at the same time. So this part um, is just me getting ready to set down my, my miners. Gotta research them, gather some resources right now. And uh, like I said earlier, my focus is automating. You can use your replicator. You can get away with replicating pretty much everything for a while in the early game. But man, is your life easier if you just automate something, even if it's one factory making a thing. You would be amazed how quick those parts pile up. And it's, a, it's really a time saver to have them when you need them. So... Um, there's a tutorial in the game when you're rotating your, your miners. If you press R, it will rotate it in each of the four cardinal directions. And if you hold shift and press R, you can rotate it kind of like degree by degree and get it the angle where you want it. So that's what you saw me doing there in that picture. I'm going to put one down for iron and put another one down uh, eventually for this copper node. And then I'll show you what my smelting looks like. Uh, this game does a funny thing where the the level one tier one belts they can move six items per second, um, but when you're lining up your smelters, if, if you line them up in a row and you put a power pole on one end, you can get five smelters together. And then you put another power pole, and that's kind of how far you can go with that. Um, so you'll see me do that here, and you you don't get the full output onto the belt, but you get plenty enough to get started in the game. Um, one belt of iron and one belt of copper is pretty sufficient early on. That'll be laughable later on in the game when you get later cheers to be like how was I making that work but it does work early game when all you need is blue science and you just need a handful of things made so that's what we're gonna set up here um, early early game I do like to run around and collect a couple things while I'm handcrafting it just gives me something to do I'm gonna need a little bit of power so I'm collecting these trees and bushes I'm collecting the rocks nearby because you are gonna need rocks for things like um, storage units and I think smelters use stone foundation in them uh, eventually I will put a miner onto that coal that you see in the upper left and I'll put that into a box and I'll limit the box to like five or six stacks so that when I get low I can just run over grab a stack of coal um, you know your starting planet's gonna have like eight million coal so if you put a couple into your into your burner that powers your mech that you're not really hurting yourself or setting yourself back any and it does burn a whole lot better uh, and longer lasting than than plants so the first couple playthroughs I loved collecting plants 
doing the hold down the shift button and click them all, but it's tiring. It's, there's no point to do it if you just could just build it on coal and be done with it. Okay, so research, uh, smelting you want, uh, logistics you want, and then you're going to want to research automation too so that you can set some factories down and uh, start producing those basic things you need like gears. Once you produce gears, you can run gears and iron bars together to make your belts. I find one factory making belts it's plenty early game. Um, you can set up factories for your green circuits and your magnetic coils. Um, here you see me rotating the planet to see um, if you hit map and then you hit N for north, it will rotate the whole screen north, show you which way north is. And um, it doesn't really matter early game, but I do like to know where North Pole is on my planet. Because um, when I'm building, I like to build my bus east and west. And the reason I build east to west is because the width of the tiles do not change if you go east to west. But you will, you will notice if you go north and south, um, the tiles might be the same on your screen. But if you go far enough, you're going to get sections of bigger tiles or smaller tiles to contend with. And... Um, that can really be problematic. So, um, again, the basic startup is quite small, but to save myself a headache down the road, I do generally like to build east and west all the time, but especially once I have the bus going, east and west truly is the way to go. And actually, while we're talking about that, what I, what I really like to do is uh, go to the center of the planet. There's a really wide band of tiles that are the same size. It takes up like uh, a half of the planet or two thirds of the planet in the center where the, the spacing of the tiles doesn't change at all. And what I like to do is I like to go north till I hit the next band that's slightly smaller. And right where those two come together, that's where I like to build my bus. I like to build my bus in that slightly smaller band just above the main band and uh, what that allows me to do is um, start my bus there but then that main band I have this huge area to build down from where the tiles are not changing and I can just copy paste you know like 50 things straight up without without anything um, change no, without the tiles underneath changing size preventing me from you know, lining things up straight um, and keeping my spacing all even. All right, let's see where we're at on this recording. I went back and did a voiceover on this so that um, you would have something to listen to, what I'm kind of my thought process here. Okay, so power is low and I haven't automated any wind generation. So right now I'm just handcrafting a bunch to keep things limping along. Um, as a matter of fact, in this, this video, which is about 45 minutes long, I did not automate the, the wind turbines. I will. I will do that. Um, in this video, it goes from zero, goes from nothing, all the way up to having Blue Science fully automated. And you will get to see what that looks like. You'll get to see... Um, how I manage the early game. I'm by no means a speedrunner. I am not the fastest person playing this game. Uh, I can't pretend to be. Uh, but I do I do have some tricks that I have figured out my own gameplay and I'm hoping that if you watch it you could pick some of them up and take it or leave it. You know, see if that fits your play style or not. Here I'm dragging and dropping the wind turbines so you don't have to hover your cursor to find a open spot and place it down you can actually start with your cursor right over the middle of an existing wind sail and you can click and hold that and you can drag it and if the game will if the terrain will allow you to build there you can build two three four five six however many you can fit on your screen in a row and so that's what I like to do with those things just throw them down uh, somewhere where I'm not going to be building out of the way 
and um, just get a little power going for the little base here. So that'll make things go a lot smoother for you. Uh, things really slow down if you don't have the power. So take a moment, build a couple of power units, and um, you know get back to what you were doing. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm wrapping around my my belt. Uh, it kind of takes two miners to fill up a belt, so what I did is I built a second miner on the same patch, and here I'm going to just tie them together so that they can fill one belt with iron ore. And this will get me, uh, I think, a mostly full belt. I'm not sure if this will get me a completely full belt, but it'll be mostly full. And early game, it's good enough to start with. But... Um, you can get around with one miner, but two is is better for you. And uh, my goal here is I'm going to run my smelting line. I'm going to pull off iron bars, and then that the iron line is going to continue past the iron bar smelters, and I'm going to add the iron ring smelters. I don't think they're really called iron rings, but. They are the electromagnet component. Let's see, I've got, I don't know, one or two hundred hours in this game. My furthest progress is um, I just barely unlocked the white science. And I can warp to any solar system that I like to. Though I don't have many of the upgrades unlocked for mining efficiency or um, some of the some of the travel speed upgrades, they're quite expensive. Uh, in that game, I actually haven't progressed that far into my universe because I spent a great deal of time trying to automate my my interstellar interplanetary logistics stations automated making them automated making the drones automated making the mm, the vessels also automated my nuclear power i'm using the mini fusion reactors so fortunately one of my nearby stars um, has an ice giant and i can get fire ice off of it so rather than mining that limited resource off of a planet, this limited and rare resource, um, I can pull it off of that ice giant. So that's what I did is I built uh, gas collectors and I put, I think you can put 40 on, a, on any kind of gas giant to collect gas or to collect fire ice. And so now I have uh, a very sufficient supply, steady supply of fire ice. And I'm able to use that to make a uh, ton of graphene without having to burn through my coal. And um, But automating all that stuff takes time, so that's where most of my time has been spent, um, automating those things. I'll do a video on that game too, so uh, if anyone's interested, they can see the progress of it. So here I got one, uh, just one smelter in. And I wanted to get this factory down and start cranking out these gears because even with a handful of bars and a handful of gears, you can handcraft uh, some belts real quick. So rather than try to make a nice, pretty, clean construction line with like five or six things, sometimes you just put one down just to get you by for now, and you'd be surprised how useful that really is. So um, this is a bad habit I picked up from Factorio. Um, I would play the game to a point where, uh, you know, you get a pretty big scale going and a decent production line takes up quite a bit of room and I found myself early game hand building these giant layouts, uh, which is very time consuming and you don't have the resources all the time to, to supply a monster that big. I mean, that would consume a ton of resources that you're not even producing yet. So I've taken a new strategy of just building what I need at the stage when I need it. Um, and when it comes to this game particularly, um, uh, with some exceptions, I really don't tear things down. There's so much room to build that you can just leave your little starting base once you get a bus, um, 
unlocked and you get concrete unlocked and you have enough power to start really building and you've got your belts and your factories and your power pools and everything all automated and you have a infinite supply at your fingertips that's when you can really start building like crazy and um, at that point you can scale up and you can blueprint things at a scale that um, your technology will allow you and um, go from there and then when you go bigger from that on you just the next place you're building you go bigger than that and you don't have to spend time tearing things down you can leave those old useful systems in place and just make the next thing better and uh, you know move on you save a lot of time I noticed uh, my first playthrough first couple playthroughs I was spending a lot of time tearing things down trying to make them perfect with my new tech and then I would unlock some more new tech faster assemblers uh, faster belts and and, and then my ratios would be off and I'd spend time tearing things down and rebuilding them with the new ratios and I, I realized like what am I doing this you don't have to do this you just leave it there and if you need more gears or you need more tier one motors then just build more tier one motors somewhere else you don't have to you know reinvent the wheel okay so here's what I was talking about earlier with smelters you can put five of them next to each other between power poles. If you run six, uh, something's going to run out of power in the middle. So you run five, um, and it's a nice clean setup. It's a simple setup, and you can copy paste that. You can do five power pole, five power pole, five power pole, and that's basically what I do when I get faster belts. But early game, this is the way I, the way it goes for me. Uh, here I'm diverting the iron bars away because this is where I'm going to start with my um, magnetic cores. I mean, I think they're actually called something else in real life, rotors or stators, but um, in this game I think they're just iron, iron cores for the purpose of the electromagnet. So, um, if you look at your tooltips, which I recommend looking at them closely, you will see that the iron cores actually produce more slowly than the iron bars do. It takes a second and a half to make iron cores, whereas it takes only a second to make the iron bars. So, um, to make, to utilize a full belt of iron ore, you need nine smelters not six. So you'll see me set up uh, I don't know, eight or nine smelters to accommodate for that. Uh, here's where I'm setting down my coal mining for my max power. Just gonna pop in a little uh, storage unit there and um, this was something I actually didn't do until a couple playthroughs in because I really didn't know how massive the pile of coal was on your planet. I didn't have a sense of it. I was worried I was going to run out, so I kept cutting trees down and burning trees in my power generator for my mech. And uh, I did this one time. I built a miner, and I put raw coal into it. And then when you unlock when you unlock energetic graphite, then I started burning energetic graphite. And wow, what a difference it makes. It really makes the world a difference. You don't have to waste time clicking trees. The power, uh, when it burns, you get more power. It burns longer, so it lasts longer. It's just a small quality of life improvement I would highly recommend uh, for anybody. Okay, now um, here I'm just uh, using the shift left click copy and paste function. So even before you have blueprints, you can actually copy what you have, copy a single item and paste it. And when you when you move uh, when you do that with a factory or a smelter, it will also copy the sorters that are feeding it. And it's great. I'll just copy and paste and ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk, and then you just change the recipe on it. Pop that over to uh, iron iron cores. You'll see me do that in a second. 
good to go. Another thing I like to look at when I'm setting up factories is um, when, you, when you're producing an item, it's going to take, uh, I'll give you an example. When you're making circuits, it takes two iron bars and one copper bar. So ideally, um, you have a couple options. You can run the iron bars right up against the factory. You can run the copper bars on the next row out, so it's one space away. Um, or you can do like iron on one side of your factory, copper on the other side, and then when you output your circuits, you can just output them to an outer lane, make an outer lane. Um, but you want to look at your recipe, see how many of each item it's consuming, and then run your belts accordingly. Um, you know, the resource that you're using the most of, you don't want that far away, you want that as close to the factory as possible. Uh, then you can use the least number of sorters to get it, get that factory fully supplied. Magnets, they're called magnets. Um, you can hold control and you can left click and drag over a bunch of factories or smelters or storage boxes and it will just grab everything inside of it. So you'll see me do that. You hear the click, 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 click. That's me holding control and then just left clicking and dragging my cursor over all four of those magnet smelters. And then boom, I've got three, 400 magnets in my inventory. Uh, it's a lot faster than clicking and opening each unit and, and then holding shift and, and left clicking it to drop it in your inventory. It's, it's a good time saver. Okay, so uh, I can't count. So I think I just built eight instead of nine, but it's early game. Your ratios don't have to be perfect. Um, and this is a good, easy setup. I'm gonna throw a couple more gear making factories down and that will keep me topped off as uh, later on when I automate factory production and wind sails and those those early game items that need a couple of gears uh, one factory is just not going to get you there three or four I think is is good so that you'll see me set those up here while I'm uh, juggling my inventory I am terrible at managing inventory I will admit it I always have been with these games I want to carry too much and I wind up with a whole lot of stuff that I don't need and not enough room for the things I do need. Something I'm working on, but if you have any tips for me on that, let me know in the comments because inventory space is limited and, and managing it well will make your life a lot easier. There we go. Get some factories down. I think I went with three factories here. factories there's some other minor details in the game I didn't didn't actually pick up on at first like the fact that your smelters don't run at a 1.0 efficiency the level 1 smelters run at like a 0.75 efficiency so it doesn't take six smelters to fill up a belt of iron bars it takes like seven or eight because that they build in that inefficiency. Uh, same with your factories. If you look closely at them, their efficiency is a little wonky. Um, so nothing I'm building in this in this playthrough is going to be perfect ratio or anything like that. Uh, it's just going to be um, I don't know what I found to be a good starting amount for getting this going. As far as research, you'll see that I actually started strong with research, but really all I wanted was belts and smelters and factories. That's, that's really all you need 
for like the first half an hour, hour of the game. Um, I have handcrafted the hundred blue that it takes to unlock um, logistics for the splitters. Uh, splitter is the most useful item in the game, I would say. I use them a little differently than most people do, so you'll see that in my next video. Uh, but it sort of worked for me, and I haven't found something I, that I like more. If I find something I like more, I'll, I'll use that, but uh, you'll see. Um, when people are using buses, what, what I see a lot of folks doing is they're putting the belts down in a line, and then they'll leave a whole tile of space between them, and then they'll put another line. And and I know exactly why they're doing that. Um, you know, and they wind up with this stripey barcode pattern. Um, it, it takes up quite a bit of space. When you when you get all the way to to like purple science, I mean my belt is like what twenty maybe not twenty, that might be an exaggeration. Ten, fifteen tiles wide with all the components and materials and subcomponents that are worth putting on a belt. You just have a ton of them and if it instead of being 15 tiles wide, if it's now 30 tiles wide, I mean, that's that's actually a lot. That's a big chunk of your planet. And the reason people are doing that is understandable. What They do that because when you put a splitter down, um, if you put a splitter down, um, you, you can't put another splitter directly next to it. You can if you move up two or three tiles, and I'll show you guys what this looks like in the next video. But you can't put them directly side by side if they're only if they're the if they're like immediately adjacent to each other. If there's no empty space between them, you can't do that. So you have to plan how you bring resources in and how you belt out resources to your production lines. You have to plan it out a little bit carefully. But you can run your belts all right next to each other. It can be a spaghetti mess sometimes. Uh, <laughs> it, sometimes it happens, but uh, it still conserves a lot more space than spacing them all one tile apart. So that's what I prefer to do. All right. Um, oh, so I'm building out my copper here. So one of the other things I like to do is basically rush the logistics that allows you to get splitters, rush concrete production, and then uh, then you get into like oil production. It takes me a while to automate all the things that go with oil production. Um, but once I get to that point, things are moving pretty good. Yep, here you can see power problems again. Not too far from this point, I did build like 17 wind sails, and I really upped my power generation a little bit incrementally. But back to research, um, I'm a big fan of proliferators. And I see a lot of comments to argue the case both ways on proliferators. Some people think it uh, adds a lot of complexity to, to your whole bus and logistics system. And it's not worth the headache. Um, other people have looked at the numbers and said, you know, uh, if you have a long production chain, that includes like taking iron ore, converting it to bars, taking the bars, converting it to gears, taking gears and bars and making a, like a motor, and then taking that motor and making another motor. Each step with the proliferator, you get extra product. And I think tier one is something like 12.5% free product. So it's like one, one iron ore gives you one point one, two, five iron bars. And then 
you take that number, that 1.125, and you multiply it by 1.125 on the next step. And then you multiply that by 1.125. And the more steps you get, the m you you know you get this huge. It's a exponential growth, not a linear growth. So you get this increasingly effective uh, extra production. There's a huge energy cost that goes with it, uh, which is it is manageable. It is manageable, and I'm going to stop telling that story here to show you what I what I'm indicating with the belts. When you see it go red, red, yeah, red, white, red, white is um, I pressed up once to make a second level belt and when you're holding your cursor over a belt on the ground on the first level the game makes it red because it thinks you're trying to connect your high belt to a belt on the ground and you, you can't connect the belts that way but if you hold shift then um, it will actually move the belt to the level you have selected so it, when, I, when I hold shift, you'll see it pop white because it's now above the other belt. And that's what I did. I just ran the copper right down the middle of my mini base here because I wanted to run it between my iron bars and my magnets. And the reason for that is when you are making, you'll see me making it in a minute, when you're making your circuits, you need more iron than you do copper so my iron will be next to my factory my copper will be slightly further away and then when you're making the electromagnetic coils you get um, your coils are closer to your factory and your copper is further away which is exactly what you need uh, this might be overkill for this step in the game, but I'm making four circuit factories, and I'm going to use the shift left click trick again here. And you'll see just how fast it makes it. I don't know what patch they added that in the game, but what a time saver, man. It's really awesome. You just, you'll see me just drag this thing and just one, two, three, four, done. You know, and then move on to the next thing. <laughs> even, even late game, honestly, not late game, but like pretty far into the game, when I need to make a row of things, if it's like putting down water pumps or something, I'll just drag and drop and just drop like 15 of them in a straight row in just a second. I mean, you don't even have to hit Control C to bring up the blueprint menu. It's just shift. <laughs> shift left click and drag it's awesome all right and then you'll see me do my trick where I hold down control and I left click drag over a bunch of factories and I just pick up everything so I do that with these with these circuits in a second Ran out of factories, but uh, in this video you will see me automating a factory eventually. Just one. Um, I'll put the factories in a box and I'll limit that to two slots because 100 factories is a lot early game. You have so many resources. Um, you can you can leave the boxes without a limit. But what happens is when you want to take that box down and build something there you know, you, you need somewhere to put 30, 30 stacks of things, and that's really a pain. So I tend to limit boxes down to just what I need. So later on, if I ever need to move it or destroy it, you know, I don't have to dump a bunch of product on the ground or find another box to put it in. All right, so far so good. On this map, I was very fortunate. I wound up with a pretty good straight open spot early game. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually i am got more water than I want to deal with. And this one worked out okay. At least got me to blue science. Um, I'll get blue science up and running. In the next video, I will show the bus, how I get that working. And I think I will have time to show red science as well. Um, 
my first couple attempts at using oil production were just awful. <laughs> just terribly awful. Um, I've come to the conclusion from my own play and other people's games that there's, there's, there's a ridiculous amount of hydrogen in this game. And, and um, I thought that it was necessary to break oil into energetic coal and hydrogen. No, that's not what it does. Refined oil and hydrogen, and then you take the refined oil and and you run that through another factory, another refinery, and you get energetic coal and more hydrogen. Um, which is not a lot different than how we process petroleum. Um, so they did kind of a good job copying a very simplified version of the uh, petroleum process. Uh, but anyway, um, I thought you, because Red Science needs energetic coal, I thought that you had to take the refined oil and crack that into energetic coal but then I realized kind of mid-game that refined oil is your valuable resource um, you can get like an infinite supply of hydrogen from uh, a gas giant so you're, you know it's like you're limitless on that and even later in the game when you start cracking I think it's fire ice when you break that down and make graphene out of it you produce more hydrogen in that process too and now you got to deal with that hydrogen so, um, I, I stopped that using that second tier of oil production where you, you turn refined oil into energetic graphite. I just gathered my graphite from my coal notes, took the coal, ran it through a smelter, get the energetic graphite, and just inject that right into the red signs. Um, you know, I thought, I thought early game, I was... I was wasting that, <laughs> wasting the coal, wasting that limited resource. But when I realized how much of it there is, um, and that the game has so much hydrogen, there's no need to go through a second oil processing step that gives you more hydrogen. There's just so much of it that it's made more sense for me to conserve the refined oil. And uh, so that basically is my two cents. You can do it either way. Um, it's just up to you. Do you want to conserve your coal early game or do you want to conserve your refined oil early game? All right. Sorters on deck. Two stacks is plenty. Sorters stack in a stack of 200. So 400 sorters early game does go a very long way. So I just do two stacks of those. Two stacks of factories because factories stack in 50. And I'll do like a row 10 stacks of belts it's a little overkill but you go through them surprisingly fast when you really get into the groove and you start building um, and you're going from and when you start to cover that entire wide band in the center of your planet like I said I like to start at the northern side of it and when you start building down if there's nothing in your way or you have concrete to make a smooth path uh, I don't know the distance. It's got to be like a hundred tiles or something. And you build a lot of stuff in a hundred tiles, and you go through thousands of, of belts faster than, than you would imagine. So um, having having enough on hand is always good. I don't mess with tier two belts. I make the tier one belts work, and I rush the tier three belts. And it's kind of a, a stretch at the end. <laughs> Things really slow down. That you get. To a point where the, the the tier one belt's really not that great for some bottlenecks in your production line but if you can manage and you can get to tier three belts and you can automate that as quickly as possible uh man it is that for me that's kind of where mid game starts i know a lot of people would disagree with that but when you get that belt i feel like your early game's over the speed of your production uh you know, triples because your belt speed triples. Um, it just really opens up the game. I I wish they had a better tool for upgrading belts. I wish they had more of a 
drag a window and upgrade the belts kind of a thing but they really they don't you know you have to hold shift and left click each belt section that you want to upgrade and it's a little tedious that's my my one exception to you know leave leave what you built and go build something better when you have your early bus system set up it's really a necessity to I think it's a necessity to upgrade it to tier 3 belts and it takes a little while to do that but well worth doing once you do it things really start moving in your factory all right so now I'm laying out my circuits and I'm laying out my magnetic coils next to each other so that we can get you know get a factory in here for uh, making research get the matrix down and um, we're about 10 minutes out I think from the end of this video and uh, yeah this was uh, this was a good run uh, you saw how I balanced the early research um, making enough smelters to get going but not so many that it's a little crazy uh, keeping power online early game expanding power as needed uh, in the next video I will automate the production of wind sails I probably will burn a little coal just to make energy a little bit easier um, and that transition to nuclear power but um, I think this is a good balance of smelting and factories to show someone how the early game can be set up with just a handful of buildings and then um, in the future videos you'll see how I scale up my production to meet the demand yep um, realize I need a whole bunch of glass plates oh here you get to see me run out of power there is an achievement by the way if you run your mech out of power you take all your energy out and then you jump in the water and your mech is unable to fly over it there's an achievement for that so <laughs> You should try that. I haven't tried it in lava. I don't know if your mech gets destroyed, but uh, if, if you have done that, let me know. Uh, yeah. Here I just ran to the nearest coal node, pulled out about a dozen coal manually, and then ran over to my box and refilled my inventory with my coal. But you saw me grab coal much earlier in the game. I don't know the timestamp on that moment, but. You can see it did last quite a while. I mean, early game, the coal really does it does stretch out for ways. All right, get the coal, and then I come back. I set up my glass production. Just one little glass replicator uh, with a box of two stacks or three stacks, and then that allows me to. Um, get my matrix labs in place for blue production and research and uh, yeah it went well I feel like it went pretty smooth thankfully I had a nice open piece of land if you don't you had to, you can get creative you know the tips I can give you is um, keep in mind that you can build belts over water you don't need foundation to build belts over water so if you need to Cross, leave your island and go to another piece of land that's bigger and has more wide open space and there's no nodes or lakes in the way early game you know do that if that's what you need to do you know you just need to get concrete you just need to get um, the logistics for for the splitters and once you do that then those those obstacles well the, the nodes will still be in your way but water isn't a problem anymore you can work around it you may have to manage how much soil you have in your inventory um, you collect soil pile whenever you build or put concrete down on a high piece of ground everything that's above sea level for lack of a better word everything that's above sea level uh, will turn into soil pile in your inventory and if you want to build over water, uh, if you want to build landfill or concrete over water, it will consume that soil pile. 
So you may have times where uh, if you're trying to build over a lot of water, you could run out of soil pile early game. And frustrating, uh, but there's ways to manage it. You could walk around or fly around your planet to a place where you see a wide open space and you can just put concrete down. Just wave your mouse back and forth and you, you, you will put blocks of concrete here and there and as you're doing that you accumulate soil pile rather rapidly. Um, and of course the more hilly the area the more the more dirt you collect during that process. So uh, I have had games where my belt is going really well, my bus is, is doing great, but I, I need to build my factories out over some water and the only way I can do that is collect more soil pile. So I've actually had to go to like the other pole of my planet and just start laying concrete down over ground to, co to like recoup soil pile. Um, there are planets in the solar system uh, or elsewhere in the universe uh, in other solar systems that have massive amounts of soil on them. And when you start building, I was like a frozen tundra planet on one of my games. And everywhere I built, I got thousands of soil piles. So even just some minimal building on that planet, I wound up with over a million soil piles. So um, it's by no means hard to find in the game, but you do have to manage it early game. All right, blue research online. Gonna get the research matrices online. There we go. And that's it. I'm gonna build another set of these. So it's two by two. Um, I think this production line can support more than that, but it's plenty sufficient for this early game research that I'm just trying to get a couple things knocked out. Um, Hopefully this was was enlightening. Um, show folks, you know, how simple a layout can be, uh, and still be, you know, effective at, at providing you the early game items you need: the belts, the factories, the sorters, the coils, the the green circuits, and also provide you the research you need to move at a pretty good pace for early game. Look forward to doing more videos. Um, showing more of uh, the things I've learned hopefully learning from other people as well but uh, yeah this has just been this has been a great game no major problems anywhere tip I can offer is that when you put a belt down you can click the belt if you click the items on the belt you will gather them as they're coming down the line but below it there's a memo icon you can click the memo icon you can do a couple of things um, you can actually you can see all the items in the game so you can see what the components are of the items you haven't even un unlocked yet but you can also um, you, you can mark a belt with the item that you want to put on it or you mark it with anything, really. But what's cool is if you do that and you put a marking on a belt, you copy that belt and extend it or blueprint it, that, that icon goes with it. So if you're building a blueprint for a production line that needs like iron bars and gears, you can label them on the belt. And then when you blueprint them, they'll show up where you paste it on the ground. So you won't have to guess where things go, but I should just tell you. So there it is, improved logistics. Uh, I now have access to splitters, and I'll do a video showing the bus. I hope you all have a great day, and until next time, see you later.